should a Christian eat? Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I think we need to from the Bible. And I'm going to show you from the Bible what the Bible says a Christian should eat. So let's get our Bibles out tonight. And uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit and see what the Bible says. Um, I, I should have done this a long time ago. It's my fault. I'm a little bit disappointed uh, in some of you folks that, uh, that you should have had issues like this settled years and years ago about what the Bible says you can eat and what you can't eat. And uh, I know last week we had some people just tore all to pieces over, over your diet. And uh, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says tonight and um, mention, mention a few things and go over this. While I was down there last night in the motel, I just jotted down some things. That's what I did last night late while I was in the motel in, uh, in uh, Georgia. And I, what, I thought, well, according to the Bible, you know, there's a lot of choices like this you have to make for yourself, and that's true. And so that, what I'm going to do is help you tonight with the Bible because I don't want anybody to get the idea that uh, you're sinning if you, because of what you eat or what you don't eat. And I also don't want you to uh, get the idea that you're more spiritual because of something you eat or don't eat. Because that would could make a lost person spiritual. And um, so let's just see tonight just what the Bible says. Now the way you know what's right in an issue like this is look at what the book says. Look at what the book says. I'm so thankful many, many years ago, uh, years and years ago, I made up my mind to be a Bible believer. I believe the Bible. Whatever the Bible says, I believe it. Um, and uh, I'm not saying this anything because Brother Harris. I think Brother Harris done a great job preaching, and uh, he has the same convictions about eating that a lot of people have. He didn't. He didn't try to tell you anything was a sin that I know of. I'm not. I'm not knocking anything he did. We're gonna have him back uh, to youth rally. He's gonna be giving his testimony done a tremendous job. And I don't want to hear a word of criticism uh, about a man of God like that. Uh, not a word. That's, that's not your place or mine either. But uh, since it all come up, I didn't bring it up, but since it has, uh, let's just dig into a little bit and see what the Bible says, okay? Would that be all right with y'all? I've never seen anybody, many, let's put it that way, Lester Roloff was probably an exception. I've seen very few people since I've been saved and you got to understand me, I've been saved a long time now. Uh, I've never seen many people since I've been saved who really, really got into the health food uh, movement, as we call it. I mean, head over heels all the way. Uh, I've never seen one yet that didn't usually didn't carry it to the extreme. It seems like once you get started, this leads to this, this leads to this. Once you could keep it in moderation, it'd be okay. And... Uh, the Lord knows most of us could really do some improvement on our diets. That's for sure. Isn't that right? Now, y'all hear me joke about it. And a lot of times I am joking when I say, yeah, you eat greasy cheeseburger or something like that. But I know that a lot of things we eat are not good for us. I know that. I mean, when I really get honest and you pin me down and make me be honest, most of us could do some changing in our diet and physically it would be good for us. Amen? Really, I mean, that's just the honest truth. Uh, me, right on down to you. Uh, everybody in here. I, I don't think that a person should think, get the idea that they're more spiritual than another person because uh, of a diet plan. And I have met some like that. And I'm not referring to Brother Stan. I'm not referring to him at all. He's a fine man. But I have met people who kind of look down. Kind of. It's just like a charismatic who speaks in tongues. They look at like, I've got a little something you don't have, you know, and that puts me up on a little higher plane with God, which, it, which of course, it doesn't. And another thing that scares me about the health movement, health food movement, is that it has new age tendencies in it. And uh, it, because uh, when you go to strict vegetarianism with no meat at all, you're getting awful close to new age doctrine. Because that's what the New Agers believe, that animals are equal to us and it's sin to kill them. And uh, that's not true. Animals are not equal to us. It is not a sin to kill them. If it is, God told a million people to sin back in the Old Testament. 
and eat them. So uh, the first thing I'd like to do is define what the Bible says about the word meat. And uh, I didn't got a book on this or nothing. I just wrote this stuff down just right out of my head. Just pop, 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 pop. And I just got my concordance down. And I'm not going to ask you to turn to all these. But if you understand, if you believe your Bible, sometimes the word meat in the Bible means nuts, berries, leaves, and fruit. Sometimes it talks about that and it uses the word meat. It just means food in general. Sometimes it is talking about actual flesh, cooked bones and body of, an, of, a, of a being, of a creeping thing or a fish. In Genesis 27, 4, uh, the, Jacob told his boy there, he said, go make me savory meat such as my soul loveth. And he told him, he said, go cook that stew like I like and bring it in here and fix it for me. That's Genesis 27, 4. But in Isaiah 65, 25, you don't have to turn to it because I'm going to give you a bunch. So just write them down. We'll turn to a bunch. Isaiah 65, 25 said in the millennium that dust will be the serpent's meat. Dust on the ground. So we know that's not talking about meat like flesh on bones. It's talking about intake, what's going into you. So sometimes in the Bible... Meat means flesh on bones, and sometimes in the Bible it just means whatever you're eating, leaves, berries, nuts, fruits, or vegetables. And it does mean that. The context determines which one it means. And nobody has a right to say it means the other if the context don't say it means the other. Like you can't read the Bible where it says don't eat meat and say, well, that's talking about food. See what I'm saying? You can't do that. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, look at Leviticus 6.29. Let's look back in our Bibles to Leviticus 6.29. Last week, instead of... Uh, I heard more talk about food than what God was doing. Last week... I didn't hear them say, Glory to God, Lord really blessed me this week. I heard more about food than I did what God. See, the devil don't care what you get off on as long as you get off. The devil's smart. He can put your attention off on something else so you'll miss the blessing of God. We ought to be smarter than that, people. I thought we was smarter than that. Leviticus 7.29. I'm sorry. 6.29. Now, here's where they're eating. And no sin offering whereof in the blood he brought into the tabernacle congregation to reconcile with on the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burnt in the fire. And I've got the wrong verse, yours world. It's back there a little bit where it talks about it was holy. 629, that's what I had. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I read 30. All the males among the priests shall eat thereof. This is talking about a ram and a bullock, like a big cow. Cow. Beef, in other words. They shall eat thereof. It is most holy. Now, you've got to remember, in the Old Testament, God told Jews that there were certain meats that were unclean for them. Right? God told you. One of them was the swine. That's pig. Pork meat. God said in the Old Testament to Jew, it was unclean. God said any any a fish in the sea that did not have scales, that's catfish, shrimp, lobster, scallop, anything else that tastes good. God said it, it was unclean. He did. God said it was unclean. Straight across. Unclean and they were not to eat it. Then when he got to a ram or a lamb or a bullock, and he told the priest to eat it, and he said, it is holy. So we know for a fact that God told people to eat beef and ram and lamb chops in the Old Testament and said that it was holy. Sure he did. I mean, it's all the way through there. There's no... He told them to take the shoulder, shoulder, and, uh, that, that right shoulder, that bullock, and eat it, and it was holy. Now, and then we know he did fish. We don't take time to go into all these. Jesus fixed fish there after he 
rose from the dead, and fed it, and fed it to the mountain. So we know there's at least some animals that are good and holy to eat, and fish is holy and good to eat, and some fowls in the Bible is holy and good to eat. Now, let's look at Ezekiel 47, just a second. Just to go on the other side of the coin. Ezekiel 47, and uh, that's on over there in the Old Testament. Y'all turn fast, we'll go fast, okay? Ezekiel 47, 12. This is some prophecy here, and here it uses it entirely in another context. Ezekiel 47, 12. And by the river... Upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, we're at Ezekiel 47, 12, shall grow all trees for meat. You see there how it'll turn right around and use that word meat, but it's not talking about meat, meat like we think meat is meat. It's talking about trees, trees, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his month's because their water they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So we know there's two ways meat's used in the Bible. There it's talking about fruit, and back there in Leviticus, it's talking about the shoulder, a, ham, uh, uh, a uh, beef shoulder cooked in fire with all the blood cooked out of it, and the priests were told to eat it when all the blood was cooked out of it. Nowhere in either testament does God say it's all right to eat meat with any kind of blood in it. That's always forbidden, and it's always a heathen practice, and it seems to seem to look like that in the Bible. Now, um, let's look at another one. Um, let me just give you these. In Daniel one eight, Daniel said he wasn't going to be defiled with the king's meat. And no doubt the king there was saying, you've got to eat this and got to eat that. And Daniel said, I just ain't going to do it. I'm not going to fool with it one bit. Daniel wasn't going against what God already told the priest they could do. It was more than likely either unclean meat because he was a Jew or else he just said, I'm not going to eat nothing the king's got for me. Give me pus and all that kind of stuff uh, to drink. I mean, he ordered a, you know, uh, he ordered a scab sandwiches and a glass of pus, brother. And he, 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 uh, uh, that's right, he drunk pus. I don't know what pus is, but I don't, it don't sound too good to me. Uh, he, he, that's what he ate. And his flesh became better because God blessed him. Then, I'll give you another meaning of the word meat in the Bible. Bet you haven't thought of this one. Jesus told his disciples one time, when he's at the well, they said, ain't you got nothing to eat? He said, I have meat to eat that you don't even know about. Do you know feasting off of God word and winning a soul can be just as good as a steak. Jesus said, I have meat to eat. You guys, I, and that's a truth, brother. Have you ever gotten a good juicy service? It's just like eating the best meal you've ever eaten in your life. Thank God for that. Oh, by the way, you know what I'm doing tonight? You'll appreciate me doing this. I am being a good minister. And I'm going to show you that in the Bible in just a minute. I am being a good minister. All right. Let me clear up some stuff here. What does the Bible say about food? Jesus fixed fish, so fish is okay. There were unclean fish in the Old Testament. Cow, okay. God told the priest to eat it. Butter, Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Somebody said, butter will kill you. Well, let's see what God said about it, okay? Deuteronomy 32, and this is cow butter. Deuteronomy 32, 14. The Lord blessed him. He, 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 he fed Israel. He made him ride on the high place of the earth. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and all out of uh, the flinty rock. And he gave him, verse 14, said, butter of kine. Kine's an Old Testament word for cattle. And milk of sheep. With fat of lambs, rams, the breed of Bashan and goats, with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. So God did okay cow butter in the Old Testament. Now, so we know butter's okay, we know bread's okay, we know milk's okay, we know honey's okay. The right way. Now, too much butter is bad for you, right? That's why the Bible said, 
Too much bread. Did you know too much bread will kill you? Did you know too much orange juice will kill you? You keep drinking it and don't never stop. You'll die. Uh, you, you've got to have, that, the, you're supposed to have enough, a certain amount of intake can be good to a point and then there comes a point where it hurts you. That's why the Bible said in moderation, do all these things. Okay? Now let's talk about salt. Let's talk about salt. I read one of them books last week he had back there, and it said salt was the most deadly poison we had. He didn't say this, what the book said. Some guy in that book said salt was the worst thing, was killing more people than anybody. Let's see what the Bible says. Leviticus 2, Leviticus chapter 2. Do you know salt is not a bad thing in the Bible? It's not. You say, well, you just say that because you like all that stuff. No, I'm saying it's because this is what the Bible teaches. I'll bet you one thing, buddy. Y'all look at me in the eyes here a minute. Y'all look at me in the eyes. If Brother Danny thought the Bible said don't eat it, I guarantee you I'd break my neck trying not to. You hear me? You hear me? If you, How dare you sit there and say, he just says that because he... Thank God I do happen to like it. But it is what the Bible says. Don't you start that junk with me. Hey, you think I like fasting? You think I fast because I like it? I don't. I fast because the Bible says do it. And I take what the Bible says very seriously. And I'll tell you something else. you got to watch out for all these medical and scientific discoveries. Sometimes they're right and sometimes they ain't. You know what they do? They change their tune about every 20 years. They used to say something caused cancer and then another thing caused cancer and then they found out that didn't this did. Then they found out, no, it ain't, that won't hurt you after all. It used to be calories, 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 calories. Now it's fat grams, fat grams. Pretty soon they'll discover something else and find out this and that. And I'm not saying they're all wrong, but I'm not saying they're all right either. Only thing you've got that's all right is this book. Leviticus, Leviticus 2.13. Leviticus 2.13. God told them, guys, before they eat this, every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. You know what salt is in the Bible? It's a picture of a spiritual, seasoned influence that Christians have on this world. That's what it's a picture of in the Bible. Food without salt is like a church that has all the truth and no warmth and spirit and seasoning in it. The Bible says, let your speech be with grace, seasoned with salt. Salt makes people thirsty for the water of life. Salt in the Bible is a good thing. It sure is. And the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from the meat offering, with all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. Now let's look at Job chapter 6. You say, well, Brother Danny, too much salt. That's exactly right. you got it. Too much salt is bad for you. Too much is bad for you. You're going to have to work it out between you and the Lord. Job 6, 6. Job chapter 6, verse 6. Job chapter 6 and verse 6 said, Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? The answer is, no. <laughs> Not in my opinion. I mean, you can eat it, but the only reason you eat is just to stay alive. It ain't to enjoy it. You know, eating a, eating a baked potato with no salt, boy, you just, just eat dirt. Yeah, it ain't, I mean, you might, it's like you roast beef with no salt at all. Why, well, just cardboard, man. Just soak you some cardboard in hot water and eat that. It's the very same thing. That's what the Bible teaches. Salt is a seasoning. Now, what did Jesus say about it? The all-time authority. Mark chapter 9. What did the great physician... You want to hear what a doctor says about salt? Let's see what the great physician says. Doc. Case settled. Mark chapter number 9. And there is no way, there is no way that a Bible believer would have a problem with what I'm saying here tonight. There is no way, no way. I'm telling you exactly what it says. Mark 9, 50. Jesus said, what does he say? 
Salt is good. Settled. Period. Done. Over with. I don't care what the medical report said. Don't be a chicken now. Go out on... Go. If you can't believe the Lord in that, how are you going to believe in anything else? You say, what if they prove... I don't care. They can prove whatever they want to. I'm going to believe what Jesus said. And you watch. You watch at the judgment day. He's going to come back and say, that was right all along. I guarantee it. You never go wrong trusting what Jesus said. Saul is good. Now, we're in moderation. That's the secret right there. And all these things. You can eat yourself to death with health foods. You know it? I'm telling you, man, it's, it's in moderation. All these things are supposed to be in moderation. All right? Let's go a little further here. Um, let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And when I first got saved, I heard this stuff. I heard that, I heard that some of my kin folks went to a, a Seventh-day Adventist church and they didn't believe in eating meat. And uh, I said, whoa, my goodness, reckon we better, I was ready to quit. And I said, well, I'm going to find out what the Bible says. And I read it, and I just read it in there, and I ain't worried about it a second since. I mean, if the Bible says it, I ain't worried about it. Now, verse, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter, latter times, these are the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Here's the, the seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Number one, forbidding to marry. That's the Catholic Church mainly. That's of anybody that tells you it's a sin for you to get married is teaching you a doctrine of a devil. That's what the Catholic Church teaches the priests and nuns. Plain as, they say, well, it means this. Now, you see there where you get off when you say, well, it means? I didn't say, well, it means. I just read it to you. I didn't interpret it. I just read it to you. I don't have to interpret it. I believe it just like it stands. And I believe it's a doctrine of devils to forbid people to get married. That's why a lot of independent Baptists are teaching doctrines of the devil when they teach a lot of their church members they can't get married. Some, if a person's scripturally divorced and you tell them they can't get married, you're teaching a doctrine of devils. You bind them with heavy burdens and you wouldn't touch that burden with one of your little fingers. Now, uh, he said, forbidding to be married and commanding to abstain from meats. Any doctrine that commands you to abstain from meats is a devil doctrine. It's a doctrine of devils. It is not the Lord. It is not the Holy Ghost. And our, our brother made the statement that in the Textus Receptus, that this was just talking about food to the teachers. Now that can't be. And you know that can't be because what you're doing there is you're twisting the Bible to make it fit what you want it to say. You can't twist the Scripture to make it fit what you believe. you just got to let the Scripture say what it wants, even if it contradicts what you believe. Amen? That's what we've always done here at this church. I've always got up here and i said, this is what it says. Now, the way you know that's talking about meat, meat, is the context. Let's read it. Commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received of thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature... Of God is good. It ain't talking about fruits and berries. It's talking about animals. Animals. Creature. Every creature of God. You cannot. You can't go to the Greek. To correct the King James. You can't. If the, if the King James Bible says something. And the Textus Receptus says something else. The Textus Receptus can go to the trash can. As far as I'm concerned. Amen. This is God's book forever settled for the English-speaking people, and that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it is. Um, the, the Jehovah Witnesses do the same thing. They see the word hell, they don't like the word hell. So they say what that really means in the Greek is sheol, which means the grave. And they're partly telling the truth because hell is a pit. Hell is a big old pit. It sure is. But every pit is not hell. So if a man says meat don't mean meat, 
then you have to let the context determine where it's talking about food, you know, animal meat or tree fruit meat. Okay? Every creature of God is good. Now here's how where the big argument comes in. Most of us wouldn't argue so far. I don't have a problem with anybody believing that they shouldn't eat pork, shrimp, catfish, anything with scales. Uh, well, I have a good friends that believe that. Brother Tab and uh, his, you know, a lot of his folks, he's got a book out. And you know what? Health-wise, just strictly health-wise, they're right. They're probably right. Amen? But according to the New Testament, you have liberty as a Christian. You have liberty to eat anything you see good if you ask the blessing on it and ask God to bless it. And nobody has the right to judge you of what you eat or don't eat. Now, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, turn to... Uh, well, let's just say that. Look here. Every creature of God is good, verse 4, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified. There's a way you get rid of them poisons in it. And I agree with our brother what he said about stuff, that stuff being poison and stuff. There's no telling what we eat, to tell you the truth. Man, I'm off traveling stuff. I'll stop me. There's no telling where it come from, how it was raised. Lord have mercy. Uh, Son, I ask God, bless it, get the... And somebody with AIDS might have fixed it. For that matter, you don't know what you're getting when you eat fruits. Uh, there's insecticides and sprays and stuff. Well, you, you better ask God to bless it and sanctify it. Anything you bow your head over and ask God to bless and take all the germs and diseases and Lord knows what in the life will be in there. Um, uh, and here's where I get to be a good preacher. Verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. You're not bound up here in this church. You ever notice that? You're not bound. We don't make you do nothing. We tell you, you ought to appreciate that. A lot of independent Baptist churches, boy, you're beat over the head if you don't dress a certain way or act a certain way or do a certain thing. You ought to appreciate it. I'll just tell you what the Bible says. I say, if you want to be wrong, it's your business. If you want to live right, I'll see you one of these days. And if you don't, you'll answer for it. You all appreciate that. I can be a good minister of Jesus Christ. All right, let's go a little further. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter number 2. And here's why that a lot of Christians now believe that it is okay to eat ham, catfish, uh, shrimp, so forth and so on. They have scripture to back it up. In other words, did you know when Jesus died on the cross that He nailed the ceremonial law to the cross with Him? Everything He told those Jews to do that was ceremonial was nailed to the cross. The moral law was left alone. That's why we don't keep the Sabbath now, by the way. The Sabbath was a ceremonial teaching. Uh, one day above another is a ceremonial teaching. The moral law is still in effect. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt love thy neighbor thyself. All them are... Jesus never changed them. But when He died on the cross, the offerings, the sacrifices, the, the habits, the, the way they traveled in the Old Testament, and the diet was nailed to the cross. Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse number 14. Colossians 2, 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, us Gentiles, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to His cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Now, he took those ordinances out of the way. Now, we on the other side of Calvary say this, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day. I mean, one day above another, Sunday, Christmas, whatever you think is holy, don't, nobody has a right to judge you in respect of your eating habits, your drinking habits, 
or in respect of a holy day. Or the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Those verses are what makes many Christians today feel like they have perfect liberty to eat what they enjoy eating as long as they ask God to bless it. And they have scriptural grounds for believing that. And we do not have scriptural grounds for saying you're sinning or you're doing wrong or even insinuating it. You don't have scriptural grounds for that. And we'll get it goes back the other way too. You don't have a right to judge anybody who doesn't eat those things. Say, oh, they're this, you know. And we'll get to that in just a minute. I thought, you know, I thought we wouldn't do that. Peter in Acts chapter ten. This is a good one. I, these things I got down and started thinking about this, and this stuff started popping in my head right and left. And I thought, well, my goodness, anybody ought to just look the Bible and see what it says. Acts chapter 10. Like somebody said the other day, eat the other white meat. Possum. (laughs) Possum, fish, and chicken. Somebody said, well, if you believe in eating anything, why don't you eat a cat? Well, who wants to eat a cat? Why would anybody want to eat a cat? That wouldn't taste good. I tell you what, according to that scripture, you could. And people have. To stay alive. People have done it. People eat dogs to stay alive. I wouldn't want no dog unless I had to do it to stay alive. But uh, you can't say, well, you shouldn't eat a dog or a cat. Well, why not eat a buckeye? It's fruit of a tree. You know, same reasoning. There's some fruits and stuff that'll kill you. All, all berries, berries that are poison. Amen. You can't say, well, our God said you shouldn't eat because see all them animals you would. You wouldn't eat a frog, no, but I wouldn't eat a poison berry or a fruit either. Uh, Acts chapter 10. Look here what the Lord told Peter to do. This is weird something or another here. Look at Acts chapter 10, this illustration. Peter went up to pray. Verse 10 said he became very hungry. That's 10-10. Ten, ten. That's the Gentile number. God's switching over from Jew to Gentile. Acts 10-10. Ten, ten. That's something the Texas Receptors would never have. They don't have chapter and verses. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending on him as it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. All kind of weird creatures and animals. And there came a voice, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, Not so, Lord. He said, I ain't going to do it. I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the Lord said, spoke to him and said, What God hath cleansed. Not on the cross. Something has changed. Used to, you would now not do a Gentile. Now you got to accept the Gentile. Used to, you, you wouldn't even touch something dirty like that. But if I've cleansed it, you can't call it common. God was using the food there as an illustration of showing something different that He was doing in, in, in when going from Jew to Gentile. See, a Jew thought a Gentile, I mean, they wouldn't even touch them, rub shoulders with them because they was unclean. And God was showing them that they wasn't there. Now, let's go over to uh, Romans chapter 14 and we'll wind this up here in a few minutes. Romans chapter 14. This is the bottom line for a Christian. And I'll tell you, one thing this did do for me, it did make me, put me under conviction. I'll give you my honest opinion before God. There are, there are some of these things that you have to settle between you and the Lord and whatever you and the Lord's happy with is fine. And one person shouldn't judge you for what you don't eat. You shouldn't judge another person for what they do eat. Isn't that the way it should be? That's exactly right. And uh, if a person don't do nothing but drink juices, that I admire them, really. I respect them and I admire them. they got a lot of willpower. 
I, they got, you know, they're probably a better person than I'll ever be. But you can't, and we've had a little bit of this, and I'm not saying Brother Stan, Brother Stan didn't do nothing. He, he, he done a fine job. He done a great job. But what he done is just kind of stirred it up. And then some people, we've got people in our church that started, you know, kind of went to seed on it a little bit. And, and you can't do that. You can't, without seeing what the Bible says, the Bible does not say it. Here's what it does say. Chapter 14. Romans 14. Him that is weak in the faith, verse 1, receive you, but not to doubtful disposition. Dis disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. See, one Christian believes he can eat anything. Another who is weak eateth herbs. That's a person who, now this, in this context, was a, maybe a Jewish person who'd been taught all their life they couldn't eat meat. Then they got saved and they think, well, I can't eat meat. They're weak. They're weak because they don't, I guess, I mean, I guess, what it's saying is they just don't know nobody. And uh, if herbs is all you eat, you're going to be weak in more ways than one. You're going to have to have more than that. You know, you are what you eat. You ever heard the old saying, you are what you eat? Well, you want to be a weed? Yeah. Would you, would you rather be a stick of celery or a cow? I mean, a, a bull stick. Really, uh, you are what you eat. I'd rather be as strong as a cow than a stick of celery. And I'm not trying to be mean or nothing like that. But see, if you don't ever eat nothing heavy for you, your your immune your immune system can't fight nothing off. And uh, you you got to so in other words, so much chocolate won't hurt you a bit, spiritually or physically. So much, so much uh, salt won't hurt you a bit, physically or spiritually. So much sugar won't hurt you a bit, physically or spiritually. Too much of either one of them will. Right? Sure. I mean, that's that. You know what that is? That's balance. That's common sense way of looking at it. All right. Verse three. Here's the verse we need to look at. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And that's why some of y'all, some of y'all, oh, that Harris guy thinks he's it because he don't eat. That's wrong if you'd have that attitude. You are not supposed to despise somebody because they don't eat like you eat. Hallelujah. I mean, whatever they want to. That shouldn't even be an issue. It shouldn't even be a problem. So let him, and let not him which eateth not judge him with eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? In other words, it ain't none of your business what your brother eats or what he don't eat. It ain't none of my business what Brother John eats. It ain't none of my business what Brother Glenn eats. They want to have a ham at their house and have a good... T it ain't none of my business. If that's all right between them and God, hallelujah, have at it. Invite me. Really, I'm too. But I'm not supposed to get my friends over there and say, I can't believe they got over there and eat that ham. They're, just, oh, they're not right with God as them parkers. You know, they claim they're so spiritual. You know, that's not right. That's not right. Okay? Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or follow. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God's able to make him stand. Look at verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. And this is true. A lot of people don't do certain things on Sunday. Some people do other things on Sunday. They feel like maybe it's a sin to uh, play ball on Sunday or go golfing or whatever. Other people don't feel anything about it. What does the Bible say? Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Those, some of those things you're going to have to work out just between you and God. He that regardeth the day regardeth unto the Lord. He that regardeth not the days of the Lord, he doth not regard it. Him that eateth, eateth to the Lord and giveth God thanks. Him that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth not thanks. And, and so everybody's praising God with what they're doing. Here's a man who says, I don't believe you want me to eat this, Lord, and I'm not going to do it. He's doing that for the Lord. So I leave him alone. Here's a man that says, Glory to God, Lord, I believe you give me liberty to eat this hamburger, and I'm going to eat it. And he's giving God glory there. This guy's giving God glory for eating it. This guy's giving God glory for not eating it. 
It shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be something you go home and fuss about. It shouldn't be something that every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. I would ask you this. Don't force things on your kids that ain't scriptural. Don't force it. Let, you've got to grow up. Let them. And, but, I mean, they're your kids. You do what you want to. But I, I don't think you should force them. All right? Verse, verse 8. Whether we live, we live in the Lord. Whether we die, we die in the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 12. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Verse 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Verse 14. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. No one says nothing unclean. You know what he's talking about. He's talking about food. He's talking about meats. That's the issue of the whole chapter. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. That's where the old stuff gets started. Well, if you think it's sin, it's sin. There is scripture to back that up. But anything that's a sin in the Bible, the Bible tells you it's a sin. But what that means is, is if a man thinks something is unclean, and he goes ahead and does it, it's a sin for him, even if that thing is clean. And the reason it's a sin, because he's going against his conscience. Right? It's not because he can't partake of it, but he's violating his conscience, therefore sinning and violating his conscience. That's what that's saying. Alright? Now, uh, verse 15. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, here's something else you got to watch out for. Now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. In other words, you got liberty in Christ to eat something, you shouldn't just throw it in their face. Amen? You know, I shouldn't go around people who don't believe in eating ham sandwich. Here you go, you're on a ham sandwich. Ha ha ha! You know, that ain't right. That ain't right. Destroy not him with thy meat. That's a smart aleck way of being. You know, I preached down there at Brother Tabs. I preached revival down there not long ago. And I get down there and think, oh no, okay, now wait a minute. What can I eat and what I can't eat? You know, they take me out to Red Lobster. Well, I want to get the shrimp feast. They're paying for it. But I don't want to offend them. You say, well, you're a hypocrite. No, no, that ain't what it says. It said, for me, destroy not your brother. If you know somebody's offended by something, don't just, don't just shove it in the face. But I did it the first time I was down there. I didn't know. I don't forget. <laughs> what was that I was eating? We was eating out there and I was just putting it away, just bragging on it. And it's something they didn't believe in. I didn't know it. What do you remember? <laughs> he did it too. Look at him. <laughs> what? You didn't either? What was that? Huh? Do you remember what it was? Oh, was it at the Chinese place? <laughs> I, was, I was bragging. Up, Man, this stuff's good. And it was pork and I was just cramming it down. And there was... I noticed nobody said nothing or anything, but I honestly, I did not do that on purpose. If I'd have knew it, I wouldn't have done it. Because I, you know, I, I wasn't trying to be a smart aleck. Then they, they told me later, they said, did you know that was pork you was eating, bragging on right in front of them? But they're real, they're real mature about it. Those people are, they, you know, they don't, they don't judge you. If you want to eat like that, fine. If you want to kill yourself, fine. You know, that's the way they look at it. If you want to poison yourself, poison yourself. And, uh, uh, but anyway, let not your good be evil spoken of. That's what it's saying. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Amen? Food don't make you spiritual or unspiritual. It's your heart, brother. Now, liquor will make you unspiritual. But that's a different subject. The Bible's clear on alcohol. But as far as just sitting down, what food you can eat, what food, it don't, it, it's not meat and drink. But righteousness, joy with the Holy Ghost. Now, verse 20, for meat destroy not the work of God. Don't hinder the work of God just because you have liberty to eat meat. All things are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Now, for all of you, for the big majority of you, listen to this. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself 
And that thing which He allows. If God's given you liberty to do something, eat something, go have, it, have, have yourself a good time. But have it to yourself. Have it to yourself. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. In other words, if you eat, man, man, this might be a sin. I don't know if I should eat this or not. I don't know. It sure is good. Uh, you're, you're, that's temporary damnation you're putting in yourself. You can't have eternal damnation. You're saved. You can be temporary condemned by God. Okay? I believe I've about covered it. Uh, now I'm going to give you my opinion on something. Uh, this ain't the Bible. This is my opinion. I think if you took a Pepsi and poured it out right here, and I've thought about this because I've had people tell me, you know, that they'll kill you. And I think if you poured out a Pepsi right there and let it dry, what's it going to turn into? Just old hard gum. And they say that's what it does in your veins. And then little by little, that junk builds up on your veins and veins and veins and veins. And, you know, you finally get corroded in there and, and, and fat, fatty tooth and all that stuff. Then it makes you have a stroke or a heart attack. And that's a fact. That stuff happens. That stuff happens. And we in America are literally eating ourselves to death. You go out in those places, just about everybody you see is overweight. Just about everybody. And it ain't really what we're eating. We just, you know, three and four times a day. Most of us need to cut back even on what we believe is all right. And I'm trying to practice what I preach. I want to die right now. But I want to tell you something. Um, something's killing us these days. And I don't think we're going to find out what it is. Probably when it's too late. He's telling me about his grandmother. Which grand, his grandmother ate pork and gravy and biscuits all her life. And how old was when she died? 108. Never sick. And she come, when she was 100 years old, she said, Glenn, I don't believe I'm going to make the garden this year. 100 years old. And lived off pork and gravy. It's, it's something. I might, hey, what if, what if you find out in 20 years from now as hairspray was doing all that to you? I mean, you never know. Or it goes in there and poison you. What if you find out? I'm not saying pork and gravy is good for you all the time. But I'm, I'm, I'm just not convinced it's as bad as they're trying to tell us because of the old timers. And, and you say, well, that's exceptional. True, that is exceptional. If you pour Pepsi right here now and dry that, you know what you better do if you pour Pepsi there? You better pour water on it. You pour water on it, it'll just mix in with that water and go right on off. It'll hurt a thing. Moral of that story is, if you drink a Pepsi every day, you better you should drink water. It ain't going to dry and you can clog up if you got water in it keeping it coming through. Right? If it ain't going to dry on there, it ain't going to dry in your stomach. We don't drink enough water, that's for sure, right? Kids, every time a kid gets thirsty, they shouldn't just run to the refrigerator and get a Pepsi. Kids should drink water. Personally, I think kids should drink milk. You know, I know a lot of people don't believe that nowadays. I think milk's good for you. You know, I've never had a broke bone in my life. Ever. And I fell every way you can fall. Any way you can fall. I fell out there on my head the other night. If it hadn't been for Brother Shirley's neck, I would have broke my neck out there. I went completely up. And I was coming right down like this. My feet was up here. My head, I was falling on the cement floor. And I grabbed his neck. And that's the only thing that, that helped me. And I flipped over and landed all that. I've hit everywhere on my ankles. The only time I've ever had a broke bones, I think I broke that finger at camp last summer. I slammed the ball down on the concrete like that. And it ain't never been right since. I don't know if it broke it or not. But I tell you what. I think, personally, I can't prove this by the Bible. I think some milk is good for me. What God made for kids to drink. Is mother's milk bad for you? Um, I think that we should drink more water and wash ourselves out and fast and give our bodies a chance to clean that junk out of there and not eat so much and it wouldn't hurt us near as bad. I think if you sit down and eat three big meals a day and don't ever sweat and don't ever exercise, you're killing yourself. That's just my opinion. Okay, I'm through. Anybody got a question right quick? It says pulse, but it, 
In the Greek, it means pus. No, no, I think the word pulse means is the same, it's the same thing. I don't know what it is. I looked it up before. Cereal. It's cream of wheat, kind of like that. Really, it is. Huh? Cereal. Daniel eats cereal. I tell you what, buddy, I like cereal now. Y'all ain't never remember. I love it. Son, I love, I absolutely love Captain Crunch and and uh, Applebee's and the them sugar pops, smacks. I love that stuff. I love it. Anybody else right quick? All right. Okay, God bless you. You're at liberty to go.